this is Rob from Yo Photo Dude. Let's learn to take better photos. Today, we're going to dive more into composition. This video is going to focus on the concept of shoot tight, crop tighter. And we'll look at several examples and we'll go through some steps in tools like Photoshop to be able to show you how to shoot tight and crop tighter. The main goal behind shooting tight, crop tighter is to fill the frame. When you take a photo of something, you want that to be the main subject. And that main subject is what your eyes should naturally move to in the frame so the person can see what it is you're taking a photo of. For instance, if you're at a zoo and you have a great opportunity to photograph a grizzly bear and it's kind of sitting off in the distance in some woods, you really don't want the woods to be the dominant part of that photo if you're taking a photo of the grizzly bear. You want to be able to get in tight to the grizzly bear so people can see the bear. That's the whole purpose. Or you and a friend are out at a park and they, you know, there's a nice bench where they want to have their photo taken. Um, the background and the scenery is nice, but it's a photograph of your friend. Your friend should be the dominant subject in the photo, not the background. Now, sometimes if you're taking a photo of a landscape where the background is the dominant subject, it's okay to put your friend in that photo, but then in that case, you might want them to actually be extra small so that they're not taking away from the background. That's sort of a different concept from shoot tight and crop tire, um, but not so much that the background is the subject, so you want a tight shot of the background and cut out any extraneous stuff that's not contributing to that background. So let's take a look at some examples and um, see how we can improve our photography through a little bit of post-processing. Okay, let's start by looking at this photo of a flower. I um, shot this on my iPhone, so you, know, you can still take pretty decent photos with a phone. And um, what I want to start discussing here is if this is supposed to be a photo of these flowers, look at how much other distracting elements are here. It's a large portion of bricks. There's these flowers down here, these little pink hot spots that could bring your eyes to them. Uh, this plant is standing down here kind of by itself. Um, there's some disease on this leaf. There's a leaf up here that's kind of dead. Um, you know, you got a lot of stuff going on in here that's competing with the flower. Let's look at another version of this. In this photo, we switch the camera over to its a better zoom lens. And now, just by simply getting a little bit closer, we've eliminated a lot of the distracting elements. The bricks are gone. The disease leaf down here is not nearly as um, obvious. The pink flowers that were down here at the bottom have been taken out. Most of the ground that was kind of distracting has gone away. But we could do even better. We can get closer. But in this example, we've perhaps gotten too tight. Okay, And it is possible to crop your photos too tight. Um, we can now see our little friend up here um, on the flowers quite well. But we've lost a lot of the flowers in getting rid of a lot of the excess. A second problem when you do crop too tight is if you did want to make a print of this and you wanted to say print it out as an 8x10 shape, we can come over here and switch over to an 8x10 crop. And you lose even more of the image. I've lost more flowers over here on the side. I could try to save them, but then I end up cutting more stuff off to the side. So it is possible to get too tight. So let's look at an example that's a little bit better all done in camera. I still left a little bit of room here to play with, um, but you know we're fairly tight up here. 
we've got a little bit of room down here that we could still crop and tighten it up some and depending on the shape of the photo um, you may want to still come over and tighten this up a little bit so just by simply working in camera you can get a much better photo and let's go back to where we started at oh here was the too loose photo and here's the one after we've made a good in-camera crop and you can see the difference in how attractive that photo is to somebody sure the too loose photo here it's a good snapshot but if you wanted something that would be more appropriate to put on your wall or to share on social media, this here will draw more oohs and ahs from your audience than this will. Let's take a moment and discuss photo shapes. In photography, we refer to the shape of photo as something called an aspect ratio. Uh, this may bring back some horror memories of your... Um, high school and um, earlier math days, but basically your photos are a rectangle. That means that there's a width, how wide the photo is, and there's a height. And these photos can be expressed as a number. For instance, one photo can be three times wider than twice the height. It's called a three by two aspect ratio. Okay, that's a lot. Let's, let's simplify it. Let's say you wanted to have a panoramic photo that's twice as wide as it is tall. That would be a two to one aspect ratio. In photography, there are specific print sizes. Uh, traditionally, when you printed out film, you might get something that came back as a four by six or a six by four, or it might be a four by five or a five by four, depending on its horizontal or landscape. The 4 by 5 aspect ratio may seem a little odd. That was kind of something more for medium format film. But an 8 by 10 is a 4 by 5 How do you figure that? Well, it's 4 units wide, 5 units tall is the same thing as 8 units wide and 10 units tall. So you could take the 8 divided by 2, you get 4. Take the 10 divided by 2, and you get 5. So 8 by 10 is a very common shape for a photo to be printed in. Somewhere in between lives the 5 by 7 and even larger you get up to 11 by 14. So let's start with some cropping basics. We'll start with the 4 by 6 version of this photo. Now uh, it's landscape so it's 6 wide and 4 high but you get the idea. Many photo editing tools come with a cropping tool and it's usually two L-shaped rulers like over here okay the crop tool before we get into what this crop tool actually does let's look at some of the things across the top here that give you some control first of all if you choose ratio and leave these two fields here blank you get a free form tool so you can make any shape that your heart desires for whatever you want in this drop down, you can pick some of the standard aspect ratios, such as 2 by 3, which is the 4 by 6, which is what we currently are on, your 8 by 10 shape, which is a 4 by 5 aspect ratio, a square, which is a 1 by 1, or even a 16 by 9, which is the standard for HDTV, and it's the shape this video is being shot in. You can also add your own custom presets. For instance, if I wanted a preset of 3 by 1, I now have this new extreme panoramic crop here, and I can come over here to Ratio, New Crop Preset. It automatically names it for me, and I can click OK. And now my 3 by 1 will show up down here in the list of custom presets. Okay, but let's start with going back to the 4x6. The next thing is you have a set of arrows here. By default, when you pick one of these presets, it's going to do a vertical version. And we don't always want that. Sometimes we want the landscape version. So hitting these arrows will flip the 2x3 into a 3x2, and you get that. It's got some other powerful things like being able to help straighten the tool and some other features. 
You've also got a button here to cancel the action or a check mark to commit the action. So this is already cropped to a 4x6, so let's change it to a 5x7. Now, before I do that, why would I want to do that? Well, first of all, there's a lot of excess foliage out here. I've got this broken leaf. I've got some diseased leaves down here. This part up here is kind of distracting a little bit. This crabgrass or uh, plant down here is a little bothersome. So I might want to try a tighter crop. Let's go to a five by seven. And again, we'll have to keep flipping these because of Photoshop's default. Now I can move my picture around within the crop box. And you'll notice as I pull up, I get this kind of green stuff at the bottom down here. Well, what that's coming from is if you look over here at my colors, this green is my current background color. And if you move a picture, it has to fill in the background if there's nothing there, and it will default to the background. But the nice thing about this particular color or any other bright, obnoxious color is that it alerts you that, oh, wait a minute, I'm outside of the bounds of the photo. So I can pull that back down and go, no, I can't move that photo around too much. But even at five by seven, I mean, I can't even completely remove any of the distracting elements from it. You know, if I still wanted to make a five by seven print to send to the lab, I could go ahead and crop it and have it ready to go to the lab. Let's look at it as a four by five or eight by 10. Okay, so now we've gotten something that's a little bit better. I've eliminated some of this stuff at the top left. I've eliminated a good portion of the uh, plant down here at the bottom, but I still have my um, cracked leaves and I still have my uh, disease leaf over here that I don't like. Now what I can do is I can grab my crop handles and if you've picked a specific aspect ratio, you notice how it's not changing shape, it's just changing size. So I can pull this up a little bit and get past the diseased leaves and then I can come to the top corner and I can pull this in until my flowers are right at the very edges. I still have an 8x10. I can position it here a little bit better. And I've now got the photo that I am happy with. And we can go ahead and hit the check mark to commit that crop. And see how much better that photo is by getting rid of those distracting elements? A 4x5 works here pretty well. However, I think it can be even better if we go to a 1x1 crop or a square. Now with a square, no reason to flip it. It's going to be the same either way. Now I've gotten rid of more of the left and right side and I can slide this over just a touch and center that up just about perfectly and we have a lovely square print. Now I've also, I could come in and let's recrop this again and bring this in even nice and tight so that my crop lines are right on the edge of the flower. Let me slide it up just a touch. And this is fine too, particularly if you're just going to be using it online, that little bit of extra padding isn't necessary. But if you're going to print this out to frame it, be aware that many frames and mats have to block part of the photo. It's typically an eighth to a quarter of an inch on all sides that's going to be hidden behind the frame or the mat. You have to have some place to secure the photo within the frame. So let me uh, undo that last action and be okay with just a little bit of margin out here for my framing purposes. We've been talking a lot about making prints. Not everything we do is going to be printed out on the standard shape photo paper. There are two instances, one that might likely be very common to you, but another one that you should be aware of. We'll start with the second one first. In photojournalism, Newspaper and magazine photographers don't care about paper sizes. They don't care about fixed aspect ratios at all. What they're going to do, and let me back up here a little bit to our 4x6, 
is they're going to come in and use this free form aspect ratio and they're not going to use any particular numbers in there and then they'll just grab this handles and crop the photo to how they want it now here we're not exactly square we're not exactly 8 by 10 either but this may be a more pleasing crop you know or something you know like that the reason it's not important in print media like magazines and newspapers is photos are designed to fit into columns columns are typically two inches so the width of the photo is all that really matters so if this is going to be a two inch wide photo it might only be an inch and a half high and when they put the words on the page it's going to flow around the picture so the actual shape of the photo really doesn't matter newspaper photographers and magazine photographers can go for the most optimal impactful crop they can go for and that's really cool if you're not shooting for those media you can do the same thing if you're going to be sharing these online if you want to upload this to facebook or twitter or put it on your own website you can shape the photo to whatever you want it to be now there are some exceptions and we'll talk about that in a second but feel free to crop this to get the best looking photo you can without regards for print sizes i typically in the back of my head say well i'm always going to likely want to print this photo so i will tend to crop for print sizes but that's me feel free to do this freeform crop if that works better for you the one noted exception well there are several noted exceptions but the main one is instagram instagram either likes a vertical four by five which case this would be too tight so i'd need to come in here and uncrop it a little bit any portrait photos should be four by five if you're going to post them to instagram or square they will instagram works with either for a landscape photo you can use any aspect ratio that you want and there's a little double arrow button in the bottom left corner that will let it expand out and show the whole photo instead of its default crop of 4x5 out of the middle of the photo that you uploaded. Thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you next time. This is Rob for Yo Photo Dude. Have a great day.